Welcome to Matt's Metalworking. In this video I'll be showing you how to make your very own dual zone barbecue burner. From what I found some of those off the shelf barbecue burners don't last very long. At $60 new for a new burner locally and not lasting even two years it's quite the waste of money in my opinion. Once the burner gets to a certain stage they basically just fall apart. Ideally it's best to make it out of stainless steel but unfortunately my flux core welder doesn't work on stainless steel so instead I'm using mild steel. I went down to my local metal supplier and purchased not even $10 worth of steel. This is 1 inch by 3 inch tubing, 1 8 inch thick and 15 inches long. I tried to roughly match the existing dimensions of the old burner. The old burner was made of a very thin sheet metal and apparently stainless steel but obviously a very low quality. Starting out I'll need to cut the tubing in half using cutting discs on the angle grinder. My plan is to weld a divider in between so this does have a dual zone burner just like the old one. I don't have a cutoff saw unfortunately so this can be a little tricky to keep it square. To mark out my cutting points I'm using chalk which is typically used on metal fabrication. If you're looking for a video on angle grinder safety tips I do have one on that so be sure to check it out. Once done. The pieces are within a sixteenth of an inch and I can easily square them up using a grinding disc or file. I'm also cleaning up any burrs so I don't risk cutting myself after. Next is clamping them together to get the dimensions very close. The dimensions will adjust a bit when I weld the caps on. Now to mark out the holes. What I've done in the past is used a marking paint to outline the work piece. It's cheap and easily viewable when I make my scribe lines. First is marking out the main feed holes for the propane. First I'll mark the center of the holes, then drill them, and then mark out the screw holes afterwards. Here I'm using a scriber and a square. Next is marking out the flame holes on the side of the tubing. The original burner on the barbecue does have curved ends to allow for the flame to go all the way around. In this case it'll be a little hard to make that so instead I'll just be creating holes on the front and rear portions and the sides will remain solid. There will be two rows of holes, each row is 3 eighths of an inch away from the top and bottom of the tubing, therefore has a quarter inch from each other. The holes are spaced a half inch apart and each row is also staggered by a quarter inch. A center punch is used to mark all the holes so the drill doesn't wander and their location will remain fairly accurate. The holes will be 332 of an inch in size. I wouldn't drill them any bigger as this may affect the performance of the flame. If possible from what I found a 1 16th hole would most likely be better. However I found this a bit tough with this drill press as it doesn't have an overly high RPM speed. With smaller drill bits you will need a higher cutting speed. Cutting fluid is certainly recommended and not overly excessive pressure as you may break the bit. After that I finished up with a file to remove any burrs from the drilling. This will ensure there is no obstructions in the holes. And as you can see all the holes have been drilled. To drill the main supply holes, first I used a center drill as a pilot hole. Cutting oil is recommended. The cutting fluid provides lubrication, keeping the drill bit cool, reduces the chance of burning out that bit, and helps make a clean cut. I picked the correct size of drill bit which was needed for the feed lines. This was based off the gasket size, which you'll see a little further on in the video. With a larger drill bit, a slower cutting speed is needed, and cutting fluid is a must. Being that this is a bigger bit, there is a greater chance of that piece grabbing, so you can possibly hurt yourself. It's best to clamp down the workpiece instead. Once those main holes are made, I made a square center line and then marked out the holes where the feed tubes screw on, basing it off the gasket. The hole sizes are based off the self-tapping screws I'll be using. Some models of self-tapping screws can drill their own holes, however, I prefer to drill a pilot hole instead. This allows for easier installation and prevents them from wandering. For the caps these are made out of eighth inch sheet metal. Using paint to mark the outline then cutting the piece using an angle grinder and a cutting disc. Using a bench grinder I sized up the caps. There is three caps in total, one for each end and then another as a center divider. I want these caps to have a nice tight fit so it's easier to weld in and hopefully there will be no leaks. Considering the tube corners are rounded, I did square them slightly so the caps fit a little bit better. Then touch up everything with a file hand fitting the caps. Where the burner meets the center, a chamfer is applied to the ends of the tubing to help welding penetration. The metal does need to be cleaned to remove any contaminants which may cause imperfections in the welds. 
As you can see, I already cleaned off a majority of the paint that was used for marking. Using an abrasive pad on the grinder, again I went over the areas I will be welding so the surface is properly prepped. The end caps get installed. They do fit reasonably tight so they won't move while welding and everything is squared up accordingly. Tack welding the caps in place on opposite ends. During welding, due to the excessive heat, parts can pull or warp causing distortion in your workpiece. So tack welds can help keep those parts in place to some extent. While this isn't overly critical on a barbecue burner, it's still good practice and it keeps your project looking clean regardless of what it is. Those tack welds will need to be cleaned up using a wire brush. I'm using a flux core welder, so slag is present and needs to be removed when applying new welds. Running beads now, I'm using a small hobby welder, which only has a high and low setting. This is thicker steel, so to ensure it has a proper penetration, the highest heat setting is used. The wire is 0.035 inches or 35 thou in thickness. When welding, welders have duty cycles. This means that you can only weld for a certain time and then the welder requires a cool down period. This is needed so the welder doesn't become damaged internally. The locking pliers on the other side just keeps the workpiece from falling over. As a little tip, when there is slag you drag meaning that the tip needs to be pulled away from the welding area so no slag is pushed into the weld. Instead it flows to the surface and is cleaned afterwards. Clean up those welds with a wire brush and any splatter spray can also be used to keep the piece clean. This prevents the welding splatter from sticking, something which is common with flux core welding. Connect the two burners together. I had a scrap piece of tubing kicking around. The one side is missing which makes it a great jig to keep the burner square. The center divider was inserted in the one piece just like the end caps. Once that piece is clamped into place, tack welds will be needed to keep everything together until beads are ready to be laid. The welds can be cleaned up using the ankle grinder and a flap wheel or grinding disc. Then the welds are inspected. Any low areas are filled and if an area may appear to have a possible leak, it's also filled. The legs were cut from a scrap piece of rectangular tubing I had kicking around matching the same thickness as what we used originally. Feet for the burner will depend on your barbecue design. It sits at roughly the same height as the old burner. After those legs have been welded in place, due to the regular shaped bottom on the barbecue, I have rounded off the ends so it sits a little more secure. The old burner also just sits in place. It doesn't have any fasteners to hold it down. To install those tubes, I was able to reuse the old gaskets as they're still in good condition. I even managed to salvage the tubes to feed the propane. I haven't looked into purchasing these tubes or gaskets, but I'm sure they're readily available at your local hardware store. As mentioned earlier, self-tapping screws are used. Once those propane feed tubes have been installed, here is what it looks like before it gets installed in the barbecue. And finally a test. I'll need to play around with the igniter, but I'm using a lighter, as you can see it fires right up. Unfortunately this doesn't have continuous holes all the way around, so for the most part it needs to be manually lit. I have found after a little usage I can light it up in one shot. Keep in mind this is my very first barbecue burner I have ever made, so it's certainly been a learning experience for me. The update as to how it cooks food, I couldn't be more happier with it. I have found if I keep the lid closed, it does maintain a fixed temperature much better than compared to before. Just to give you a view with the infrared thermometer. As kind of a wrap up of what I've learned so far with this project, smaller holes will definitely give you a finer flame. The thicker steel does hold the heat extremely well and despite having less holes, the heat output seems to be much better. So far we've been using this to cook hot dogs, burgers and steaks with excellent results. If you have any tips for a propane burner, please be sure to leave it in the comments below to help out fellow viewers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to throw a like my way, it's a huge help to me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more metalworking videos. Thank you for watching.